Imagine a world where you can create entire films with just a computer and an internet connection. It may sound like a dream, but that future is closer than you think. In this tutorial, I will take you behind the scenes of my latest project and show you how to use AI tools to not only come up with a story, but bring it to life. It's never been easier to start making your own AI-powered films, so let's get right into it. So first things first, come up with a rough idea for your storyline, you can develop it on your own or get some help from your AI assistant, ChatGPT, to come up with a shot list and detailed description of your main character. To make things easier, I've prepared a prompt that you can use to get ChatGPT to describe the main character, develop the story, and break it down into scenes. Just replace the story synopsis with your own and send the message. Once you receive a response, take a look at how ChatGPT interpreted your story. You can refine it further if needed by using additional prompts. When you have a list of shots that you're happy with, you can move on to the next step. So I know a lot of us have these big, exciting creative goals for 2024, whether it's building a side creative business or learning a new skill, and it's natural to wonder where to even begin. Skillshare is the sponsor of this video and let me tell you why it's the right platform to kickstart your goals. Skillshare is an online learning community with top-notch classes created by industry leaders and it has these custom learning paths that are handpicked just for you and are designed to take you from beginner to pro in no time. These learning paths are meant to guide you through the learning process. Let's say you're interested in learning animation. This learning path right here is designed to teach you the principles principles of 2D animations and how to create a storyboard from scratch. You will learn all the way until you're ready to bring your animations to life using specialized tools and create stunning animated scenes. Skillshare offers learning paths for different experience levels and a variety of categories like graphic design, specialized tools like DaVinci and Blender, marketing and much more. So if you want to invest your time in learning something new this year, Skillshare is the perfect platform to take your career, skills, or side hustle to the next level. And if you're one of the first 500 people to sign up through the link below, you will get free access to the entire class library for a whole month. To turn the story into visuals, we need an AI image generator. If you're familiar with generative AI, you've probably heard of Midjourney. In my opinion, it's the best image generation tool available right now. Midjourney works on Discord and I'll provide the official guide below which will help you set it up. When you reach step 5, type slash settings in the chat box, hit enter, and here switch to version 6 for more realistic images. Now you're all set to start generating images for your story. To do that, select the slash image command. Here's where you need to type in the scene description that you generated using ChatGPT as the prompt for your image. I recommend using this structure. Start with the camera angle, followed by the detailed character description, and then paste in the scene description. Before running the prompt, I usually double check the keywords to make sure the scene is properly described. For example, ChatGPT imagined this as a daytime scene, but I prefer it to be at night instead, so I'm gonna change that. You can also add additional keywords if you see fit, but try to keep it simple. At the end of the prompt, you also need to specify the aspect ratio of the generated image. For me, I aim to output my final video in 1080p, so I'm going with 16 by 9. Simply type in two hyphens followed by the ratio, then hit enter to generate the image. Midjourney will take a few seconds before showing you four amazing and detailed images to choose from. If you're not satisfied with any of them, you can click here to generate more variations. And if there is something specific you want to change or improve in your image, simply modify the prompt and generate again. Once you're happy with the results, the U buttons below the images allow you to select your chosen image. For example, if you want to use the fourth image, simply click on U4 to separate it, then right click on it and choose save image to store it on your computer. I recommend saving a few images that you like and making a final decision later on. Once you have a collection of usable images for your entire story, you can consider factors like color and character consistency to shortlist your selected 
frames. In my project, I numbered the images in chronological order to keep everything organized. So I spent quite a while trying out different AI tools to animate these images. One tool that caught my attention and has been gaining popularity lately is Pika Labs. Many of you requested a tutorial on it, so I gave it a try. Unfortunately, the results I got were nowhere near what I expected. If any of you managed to get good image to video results with Pika Labs, please let me know in the comments below. Another option is Stable Video Diffusion and I do have a video on how to use it. However, the setup can be a bit complicated and you have limited control over the movement. A hassle-free solution is to use Gen2 from Runway ML. I chose this because the Runway ML subscription comes with a whole set of powerful AI filmmaking tools that you can use directly on your browser. They also have a library of video tutorials to help you get started and I will leave a link to it down below. Once you're logged in, open Gen2 click here to upload your image. Here you can adjust some essential settings before generating. Click here first and make sure you enable interpolate, upscale and remove watermark. Click here to adjust the intensity of the general motion you want to see in the scene or you can use the camera motion settings for more control which I tend to use most of the time. Here you can be more specific with camera movements like panning and rolling. I usually slightly adjust both pan and zoom settings. Another useful feature is the motion brush, which allows you to apply motion controls to specific areas. However, I won't be using it today. Instead, I will go ahead and generate using my current camera motion settings. After processing, this is what I ended up with. Just keep in mind that sometimes you will get great results on the very first try, while other times you might need to adjust the settings and generate again until you're satisfied with the outcome. You can also use the image and description tab to add keywords for any moving elements you want in your scene to guide the AI more. There is no magic formula here, so make sure you experiment with different settings for each image. Once you have a result you're happy with, go ahead and click here to download the clip. I have all my clips in one folder and I've named them chronologically. Now you might be thinking we're pretty much done here, but in my opinion, the next step is where you can really get creative and make your project stand out. To edit the final video, I'm going to import my clips over to Premiere Pro. Now, if you're not familiar with Premiere Pro and wanna learn how to use it to create professional videos, I highly recommend Jordi's new class on Skillshare, which I will link down below. This class will help you get started with basic editing techniques, video effects, and so much more. I'm gonna show you a quick breakdown of my editing process in this project. Start by dropping all the clips over here to create a new sequence. I found the perfect music track on Epidemic Sound, based on which I've adjusted the video pace. I've also added some sound effects to bring everything to life. Once I was done with that, I got several stock footage and motion graphics from Envato Elements, which I overlaid on top of certain scenes. Another important creative step here is color grading and this will depend on the final look and feel that you have in mind. I will make the project file available on my Patreon, so if you're subscribed, thank you so much for your support and feel free to grab the file to get a closer look at my settings and how the edit was put together. To export your video, press on Ctrl and M. Here you can adjust some settings, set the preset to adaptive high bitrate. I usually enable render at maximum depth and use maximum render quality. Down below, if you're exporting in 1080p, you can increase the target bitrate to somewhere between 25 and 35. Click here to choose a saving location and finally hit export to render this sequence. And hey, if you make something cool using these tools, please share it to the world and make sure you tag me. If you got questions or ideas for what I should cover next, drop them in the comments below. And please make sure to like this video if you found it useful. Other than that, stay creative and I'll I'll see you in the next video. Peace.